this might be a bit of a buzzkill ruining your fun video, but let's talk about anthropomorphism and why it can be a pretty bad thing. So anthropomorphism is assigning human-like traits to animals when they don't really exhibit them. Lots of examples of this are harmless, such as like in media, like children's movies, like Winnie the Pooh, or like, I don't know, the Warrior Cat series. Lots of times it's fully harmless like that. Or when pet owners are like, oh yeah, I caught my dog getting into the trash and he looks so guilty. No, the dog isn't really feeling guilt. It's probably just reacting to the person yelling a little bit at them, being like, hey, no, don't do that. And the dog's like, oh shit. But it's not the actual feeling of guilt, even though it's funny to look at it and be like, oh yeah, you feel bad now, don't you, asshole? Or when people are like, cats are getting revenge by knocking my glass off. It's not really getting, it's not the act of getting revenge. That's a human thing. It's not an animal thing. So lots of times it's pretty harmless, just like funny, oh yeah, look at my cat exhibiting behaviors that could be interpreted as humans. But there's also lots of cases where it can be actively harmful, especially concerning wild animals. So for example, on one of my older videos, it's blowing up where this chick is petting a family of black bears with a plastic rake. Not good, don't do that. But I have received a bunch of comments being like, one, one in particular comment that I received today, somebody being like, um, actually, the m person in the video saved the baby bear, and the mom is bringing them back around again to sh so show how thankful she is for the person saving the baby bear. And that is not even a little bit accurate. Animals don't really express gratitude in the same way that humans do. So no, the mama bear wasn't bringing her family around as a thank you for the person saving the baby bear. I don't know if the person did or whatever that I've gotten so many mixed things on that video, but the bottom line, the mama bear is not expressing gratitude because bears don't express that in the same way humans do. There's also like in the same vein where like a dolphin or a whale is trapped in some garbage or whatever and gets freed by rescuers and then all of the super cute videos are like, and then t the dolphin put on a show for its rescuers showing gratitude. That's not what happens. Yes, maybe it was jumping up and around and putting on a show, but it's not to express gratitude. It's probably like happy to be free again and not stuck in this garbage so it's moving around to like move make sure everything's working right making sure it's not injured making sure it can still live and stuff so it's like testing out its limbs after not limbs but you get what i mean after being trapped in the garbage it's not expressing gratitude towards its saviors or all that it's not putting on a show to express gratitude a big part of dangerous anthropomorphism is when people vastly misinterpret misinterpret um, animal behaviors. For example, when primates are smiling. So humans smile to express happiness and all that. If you're smiling as a human, you're happy, you're chill. But when most other things smile, it means pretty much the exact opposite. This is not a happy chimpanzee. This is a very aggressive, presenting, and territorial chimpanzee. When most animals smile, they're not expressing happiness, they're usually expressing aggression because baring your teeth shows like, hey, I am a threat, I have sharp teeth, back the fuck off or I will rip your face off with said teeth. And humans being like, when I smile, it means I'm happy. So when chimpanzee smiles, it means I'm happy. Not, or it means it's happy. Not knowing that this chimpanzee desperately wants to rip your face off. So by anthropomorphizing that chimpanzee, it's like, oh, it's smiling, it's happy. That is pretty dangerous because if you are in a close proximity with a chimp somehow and it's smiling at you and you don't know chimp body language you might be like oh we're chilling we're buddies and then get very badly injured because that chimp was not happy even a little bit 
like, anthropomorphism kind of blurs the line between human and animal, and I know humans are animals, like, but it's like a kind of different, you get that? People forget that animals are wild animals, and so they kind of decrease the caution that should be there, which can, in a lot of times, result in injury due to misinterpretation of animal body language and misinformation due to the ideas stemming from the anthropomorphism of animals. Another example of this is the unlikely animal friendships, which, yes, they're cute, they're adorable, but most of the time, they're not safe at all for either party. Now, disclaimer with this because I know people are going to get mad at me in the comments. This isn't me saying that you can't have different animal species ever interact with each other. If you have, like, a dog and a cat, that's almost always fine. Or if you have different livestock together, or if you have a bunch of different fish species in the same tank, that is almost always fine. I'm talking largely about predator and prey interactions when there shouldn't be. The main one that I see all over is cats interacting with things that they shouldn't be, such as other pets, other than like dogs usually. Dogs tend to be fine, but pets that are traditionally prey animals, so like rodents, like bunnies and hamsters, or birds like baby chicks or parrots or any of that. Those animals should not be interacting with a cat. Same thing with like reptiles, if you have like a cat and a snake. Now, even, I can go into more detail about this at some point, maybe, but bottom line is, cats, no matter how well-trained or well-behaved your cat is, they still have that prey drive. It takes just a second and for the cat to snap, and then, bam, baby chick, gone. Same thing with dogs and prey animals. Like, my dog that I have in my mom's house, she is generally considered to be a very well-behaved dog. However, a couple years ago, she accidentally, well, accidentally for us, not for her, killed one of my dad's friend's chickens. Now, this wasn't really her fault. She was just, like, she couldn't control her prey drive. But, like, again, we didn't know she was gonna do that because we thought she was a well-behaved dog. But even the most well-behaved dog can just... Oops, chicken's dead. And even if the cat or dog is not actively meaning any harm, they can still inadvertently hurt another animal. Like, cats have so much bacteria in their mouth that's very toxic to most prey animals. Like, if a cat accidentally, like, even if it's just, like, grooming or licking a, for example, baby chick, if the cat bacteria gets into the chick's eye or mouth or bloodstream or anything, it will cause a very bad infection and then dead baby chick again. So while it may look cute, bottom line basically, if you see pretty much a predator, like a cat and a prey animal, like a bunny interacting, it's not really safe and you shouldn't, I know I'm being a buzzkill, but you really shouldn't be encouraging those types of videos because most of the time it's a pretty unsafe situation, largely for the prey animal, but still could be for the cat as well. I, I think I'm not probably making a very good point. If you want me to elaborate a little bit more on this, I will sometime in the future, but for now just be aware of anthropomorphism and be aware of what you're watching on the internet especially.